Hey, welcome back everyone, Toysh is here, and I'm back yet again with yet another Marvel 375 video. In fact, uh, this will actually be the last Marvel 375 video for the foreseeable future. It's not to say that uh, we won't see more later down the road, but it's been officially announced by Hasbro that these will, in fact, go on a bit of a, a hiatus, so to speak. And we kind of sort of know where that goes. But, hey, you know what? Fingers crossed. Maybe they will return one day. The last wave of three figures will include Power Man, which is Luke Cage right here, looking all stellar. Sweet Christmas, he says on the backside. And it's a really nice write-up, right? I like that they had some great artwork on these cards. It wasn't necessarily something I wanted to keep, because I like to open stuff. But it was a nice packaging overall. Same with Spider-Woman. She looks great. To know her is to fear her. And the artwork, like I said, very, very good on that one, right? So I always like the Spider-Woman costume, we'll just say. But again, I just like how everything kind of rhymes. It's just a very nice homage to everything old school Marvel. And you really don't see that all too much. But the final figure that I had to find was Dr. Doom. So he will round it out. You have Luke Cage, Spider-Woman, and now Dr. Doom. And it's kind of fitting, right? Doom has come to the Marvel 375 line in so many ways. So tremble before the might of Dr. Doom, and we'll get all of these out of the packaging for one final look-see, and then some. Stay tuned. So, sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is a look at the very last wave, wave eight of the Hasbro Marvel 375, Spider-Woman, Doctor Doom, and Power Man. And while I got all you mini Marvelites here, I just want to say thanks so much for always checking out my YouTube videos. Now, if you haven't already, please do consider subscribing. Old toys, new toys, daily news updates. Guarantee you'll find something here that you like. Look at them all in that little collection of uh, miniatures, right? But we'll kick it off with a look at Wave 1. A little bit of a retrospective. So Wave 1 debuted in holiday of 2020 as a Hasbro Pulse exclusive. And I want to say that initially, I think that may have thrown a lot of people off. You had a lot of mainstays of the Marvel Universe in the first wave, including metallic versions, carbonized versions of Black Panther and Iron Man. I do have these. They're on card still. I never opened them up. So if you don't see them in this video, it's because they're just sitting somewhere. But it was a great kickoff to the whole Marvel 375. A lot of great characters, including Electro. Wave 2 continued the trend. They threw more X-Men in there, more Avengers, and they started with the Fantastic Four. And I guess at this point, I could tell this funny story when they asked me to reveal the Human Torch, I had ordered a few figures off of eBay that had gotten out of the factory a little bit early, right? Wink, wink. The day the Human Torch hit my doorstep was the day I got an email saying, hey, would you like to reveal the Human Torch? We all had a good laugh, but uh, I just thought that was very cool, right? Very odd. Wave 3... Very cool wave because it continued the Fantastic Four. It threw an Ant-Man. It did have a Hulk repaint, but you got Vision. You got Bullseye, right? A villain, which I will say time and time again that I think we should have gotten a lot more villains in the whole Marvel 375 lineup. But we did get a heck of a lot of heroes, and they all just really stand out. Very cool wave nonetheless. Wave 4 continued that trend. This was when I felt like it started to get kind of hard to find these on store shelves. Black Costume Spidey being, of course, a fan favorite. You had an obscure Iron Man stealth armor. You had Storm, U.S. agent. Personal favorite, Silver Surfer and Loki. So it was a fantastic wave, but I feel like this is right around the time when we started to see them kind of hit a snag of being available. Now, Hasbro Pulse around this time had a two-pack go up, which, again, I think threw a lot of people off. Wolverine and then, of course, Jean Grey Phoenix. So this was one of those where everyone thought, well, why not just do these in the main line? But as we all know, Wolverine did happen in the main line eventually. Now, on to Wave 5. This was, again, a pretty hard wave to come by initially and then saw them everywhere. So 
Mr. Fantastic, very cool. Brown costume Wolverine, which, again, they forgot to paint the boots, which was a total bummer. Venom, which is a very cool Venom. Happy they included him. You also had Phoenix in a different colorway. And then he had an amazing Falcon. Like, that is a awesome figure with all of the accessories. Now, this is right around the time where they announced they were going to do a deluxe figure in the form of a Sentinel. And I picked up three of them because... They go perfectly if you have an X-Men arcade setup. They're very cool. They featured blast rays coming out of the hands, or you could do the wild whipping tendril, which was equally as cool, and they all looked great. It was a classic-looking sentinel, which I love. And you could swap out the heads for a little bit of a battle damage. Not so great on the battle damage head, we'll just say, but the sentinel in general is one of the best from the Marvel 375 lineup. Continuing on with Wave 6, this is when you started to see a bit of a decrease in the number of characters that we were getting in each wave. They did a great job of reissuing certain characters per wave, but the new ones started to see a downtrend. And Black Widow with her little weapon right there, whatever the heck that was, was weird as heck. Green Goblin missing a pumpkin bomb, I would say Thor with his hammer and Thing would round out the Fantastic Four, which made for a very fantastic wave six now moving on to wave seven this was a wave that was very difficult to find in stores in fact i had to go online for most of these but i ended up getting a discount regardless nova opened it up to a little bit more of the marvel cosmic universe spider-man first appearance was a great colorway even though the web wings were very lackluster firestar rounded out the amazing friends and moon knight well, he was kind of missing some moonerangs. You kind of started to see the downgrade in Marvel 375. But we were met with an immediate upgrade in the form of the Deluxe Ghost Rider. This had been something I had been wanting for a very long time. And along with the Silver Surfer is a fan favorite of mine. They nailed it. This is an amazing homage to what came before. The Ghost Rider in his classic blues. The red motorcycle. This is one of the best, if not the best of the Marvel 375s, which then finally brings us to Wave 8. Now, like I said, we saw the gradual decrease of new characters in each wave, with now Wave 8 only having three. So you got Power Man, Spider-Woman, and Doctor Doom, but what they're really lacking in accessories and character selection, they more than make up for with largely new sculpts. So with Power Man, you had the big ruffled yellow shirt, you got the chain belt, you have his tiara. He looks good, right? Very nice. For that Marvel 375 old school look, which I appreciate. It's very nice to have a representation of everything old school Marvel. And that's what the best aspect of Marvel 375 was. It's all the old school costumes, which do not get a lot of love these days. With the new movies, with modern comics... Everything like this has fallen to the wayside, so it's very cool to see these still exist on store shelves. Likewise with Spider-Woman. Her colors pop. She has a great head sculpt to her. They nailed this character, although she is a little bit difficult to stand, I will say, for whatever reason. I think it's the shape of her feet. She has this really cool transparent webbing on the back, which is removable, so you can take it off at your leisure, but it's cool. At least there's a new piece to it. Although I would have said some accessories, some weapons, something like that to really add to these characters. And that's something I've said throughout the entirety of looking at the Marvel 375 line. The accessories, something to do with these characters was always something that was lacking. So if this line does in fact come back, I hope that they improve upon that. Add some clip-on accessories, really nail that Kenner aspect. Because they used the Kenner what-if scenario, and I gotta say, Kenner would have loaded the packaging up with projectiles and webbing and everything else that these characters would utilize. Now, with Doctor Doom being the very last character that I needed, he's a great-looking figure. This is a great way to end off the line. He's got a brand new sculpt, he's got great paint, he's got peg holes on the bottom of his feet... He just looks good from the cape to the front to the boots, even on the underside of the cape. He's got his jet thrusters sculpted in. You can see the cape simply just pegs in and stays very nicely. The head will see a little bit of rotation, even though most of the hood will bang up against the sides of his cape. 
He got the arms. He'll spin at the forearm. And that is where I think that Doom really needed something to do like a gun. You'll see the holster right here. There's no gun in there. It's totally flat. They could have sculpted one in. Or better yet, just given him a gun to hold. And I think that that would have been really cool because he does have trigger fingers. A lot of these Marvel 375 figures had trigger fingers slash weapon holding hands but then nothing to hold, really. Only a handful ever got the whole weapons treatment. Now, I got to give it to Hasbro on this one. It's quite shocking. They didn't go too far with the repaints. Some characters got direct repaints. Most of the time, a color change, a quick way to just redo a costume. But it worked out. Very minimal tooling. Sometimes they had a new head portrait to them. But for the most part, even though they reused bodies here and there, they did a great job at really creating new characters instead of just repainting them. Another great aspect of the Marvel 375 line was the ability to build out certain teams. Now, for the most part, we didn't get to finalize certain teams, unfortunately, but it was a lot of fun to see them encompass all of the Marvel Universe and not leave out certain aspects like the X-Men. Always happy to get more X-Men, always happy to get classic X-Men, but if they wanted to go the more Jim Lee animated route one day, I totally would not mind that if they did. Now, in looking at little mini teams that we were able to construct, we could put together Spider-Man and his amazing friends with Iceman and Firestar. That was cool. We got to build out the Fantastic Four, which is equally as fantastic. And of course, with Doctor Doom, they now have a villain to fight. So that was a lot of fun. I love that they were able to finalize that. Now, in terms of the Avengers, you were able to assemble certain Avengers teams with the Wasp being the major missing component. If we would have had her, I think that would have been a lot better. Heck, even a giant man. That would have been cool to see. Now, you can totally mix and match, which is awesome. Different iterations, different teams. But again, Never really able to complete the teams. You could do street-level heroes, which is always nice to see. Daredevil, Elektra, Moon Knight, all of those characters were a blast to collect. Even being able to go as far as to team up Ghost Rider with your brown costume Wolverine, Moon Knights, Power Man, spider Man, Daredevils. It's a lot of fun. You can mix and match at your leisure. Now, I got to say thank you to Hasbro for making Silver Surfer and Ghost Rider. Those are my two faves. And they absolutely nailed it, especially Ghost Rider. And heck, even the villains got a little bit of time to shine, even though they're severely lacking in their numbers, even though the Sentinel really does make up for it. But I love that we got Electro. He kicked it off. The Green Goblin, I would have much preferred Hobgoblin. But again, nice to see villains. The Marvel 375 line was definitely an interesting experiment. I know a lot of people like to say, well, who were these for? Well, they're for Marvel fans. It's very simple. They're for people that like old school Marvel. And like I said, with MCU, with modern comics, with everyone's take on Marvel now, all of these versions of the characters, all these costumes have largely fallen to the wayside. Everyone wants the newest and they want this and they want the new takes. This is what I think about when I think of Marvel simplistic when these were the only versions of the characters when there weren't spider verses and venom verses and gwen spider verses right it's gotten out of hand it was just simplicity back then and that's why these were a lot of fun if these were to come back which i do hope that they do i hope that they really tackle the whole kenner aspect missile launchers projectile launchers webbing Different clip-on effects, play sets, something to really build out this Marvel Universe. The Ghost Rider and his bike is an excellent example of what I would want to see. So, until they make their return, if and when they make their return, I'm very happy with what we got. They are 43, 45 figures, give or take, of some of the greatest costumes the Marvel characters, the Marvel Universe has ever seen. And it just made for a very fun display, as you can clearly see. So, I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember, to all my fellow Marvel 375 fans out there, let's hope we all meet again very soon. And when we do, 
Let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.